So, welcome to the talk. Uh, this time I'm going to be talking about a module that is, has something to do with default content. That is a topic that lately in the Drupal community people are talking about it because uh, there is initiatives to uh, have Drupal when you install it uh, to be more friendly. So, uh, about me, I'm Rodrigo Aguilera. My Twitter handle is Marinero. Uh, I'm from here, I'm from Madrid, uh, but currently I'm living in Barcelona and I work at Imbra, uh, a com company from there. Uh, I've been giving talks on multilingual and external entities lately and also talks about Composer, Behat, Code Review, and I think uh, this talk it's in the frame of these latest ones because it's about uh, workflows and how to achieve quality in the projects we we make. So yeah, my interest my interests interests are focused on that on how to develop pr Drupal projects with more quality that at the end of the project you feel really proud. Uh, and also this module because we release. Uh, is, is kind of still is an uh, in-house project, and we are opening uh, more to contributions, and we released a stable version recently. So this is the agenda for today. We are going to talk about the origin of this module, because it existed in a forum in Drupal 7 also, and how it's related to the workflows that I was talking about before. And then we will dive into the module, see some examples about how to use it, because it's really simple. Uh, what can we do to integrate it with additional modules that exist in Drupal, like paragraphs and things like that? Uh, of course, there is alternative modules and even previous modules to this one and more use, but we really are making a bet for this module. And what is the futures, the plans with the time available we have? How do we want to improve it? So the origins is uh, the origins is the necessity for 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 the module for default content actually. Uh, we dream of a development workflow first. Like um, at the beginning, you feel tempted to install the site, then install the site also on your staging, on your testing development, and then moving. Even if you're in production, take the, the, the production database and move it into, into your project to have it installed for the first time. If you think uh, mostly about the first time you install the project, like what do you want to have when you, when you start coding? And to have uh, some content that is as close as possible to real, you the first idea that comes to your mind is like, yeah, let's have the, the production database in my, in my laptop. But it's not such a, such a good idea because there is security implications, because there is passwords, there is emails there. Uh, who is authorized to have a, a database from production? Or even if you have a testing website that it has content because someone created it, uh, how do you authorize people to mm, take the, that database? Uh, and for example, when you do database dumps, you don't have the images. Whether you download the images from that, that um, the images and the files, maybe PDFs, files, or, or whatever kind of file, how do you download all those, all those images? There are solutions like a module called the stage file proxy that can help you with that. And this is related also to how, how we have our development workflow. Because uh, as long as we are develop, develop, developing and there is no production environment, that happens a lot at Imbra. We, we have a lot of projects that we develop from zero. Uh, we install the profile, a profile that is custom, and we install and install it until it has to go in production, and we go into what is called update mode. But 
still uh, in, in those two modes, like installing and updating, we want to have default content to do testing to many purposes. For ex I'm not talking of only about automated testing, but also about testing that we have humans doing that might be a demo also. So there is also the dreams of a testing workflow, what I was talking about. And we have quality assurance needs that um, a typical thing is when you try to test a new content type, you feel the fields and everything looks great because in the design, every case is contemplated in the, in the design, but mm, many, many times you discover that when, uh, when there is no image, everything breaks, or when there is a, a list with, uh, with very, very big items, uh, things might break, or when there is a big list of uh, tags, and we want to cover all those cases by creating more variety of default content. So also, this content, default content that we create can be used as fixtures in our tests, because uh, we use a BHAT, and BHAT has a possibility, well, the Drupal integration of BHAT, to have nodes in your BHAT code in the middle of it, like a table with this field is going to be blah, this other field is going to be Lauren Ipsum, blah, blah, blah. Uh, but that is polluting a bit your tests. You can have them on external files, have them installed, and everything is more cleaner, clear, clean. Uh, also, when you discover a bug, uh, you can create more content on the go with uh, the kind of content that created the bug. Like, for example, some editor created some wacky, weird HTML, and you want to support that, or you have to tell the editor, don't, don't do that. But if you want to support that, you create also default content that covers that case because it might reappear in the future and, and do a test for it, for example. And I was talking about this. You can men have many variant variants of the same content type. Your 20 fields or 10 fields that you have, have them very populated, empty, uh, in the middle, long titles, stuff like that. So in the end, the idea is that without it, without default content, we have a website like this, or welcome to Drupal, you haven't created any content yet, or we can have um, a website uh, site like this, when someone is going to do testing for the website, it looks much better. You can call it default content, dummy content, whatever. So this is one, one thing that our module solves. We have some requirements. There is uh, other modules that we've seen that they are some more complicated, but we want, we want it to be easy to use, easy to maintain, so uh, even themers can create their content and it's not, it's not a hassle to, to do it. <clears throat> So yeah, we oriented for developers. Uh, that is one reason, was one of the reasons it doesn't have an interface yet in Drupal. We want to add that because it will make the, the creation of default content easier for everyone. But at the beginning, we don't. We, it's, just, it's just files that create default content. Uh, we also wanted to base it on Migrate API because it gives us a lot of integration, like you can create any kind of, of, of content type, any kind of entity. In Drupal 8 is really awesome because it's just some YAMLs that are seen around. YAMLs at the end in Drupal, they end up being arrays, so we can create more processing. Uh, for creating content, we, now, as a minimal solution, we use Rush, and all the default content migrations are tagged with the name of the module. 
Uh, so you just have to do that, and even you can you can write this command in this command this Rust command in your content, uh, continuous integration environment. So you have default content in every environment. Uh, you can re-import all the time the content as you are developing it. Like you can clean the site. You can even uh, migrate supports updates of the content, so rereads all the default content and updates your notes. It's very, it's very cool that migrate uh, maintains some tables and knows what is the content that this module that migrate default content created. So you can always revert it or update it. And the tag thing that you see here is a um, core concept, concept. Uh, in Drupal 7 uh, groups was used, but now groups is a concept of another module, module that's called Migrate Plus that it allows you to share, it is, is, has more power than tags, but it's more simple. We only need to use tags. And so yeah, you can always roll back your content and have a clean site again. So how do we create the content? Uh, at, the, at the beginning we use CSV, but uh, it's too plain. Well, I will talk about that later. So right now we support kind of uh, CSV and YAML. Uh, we want to add JSON also as a format. Uh, when you create a new bundle for content, for example, uh, article or page, uh, it's just adding a new file with fields uh, in, the, in the YAML file or your CSV file. Uh, the map, one of the ideas of the Drupal 8 version is that the mapping that you have to do in Migrate when you're creating a migration is guessed automatically because you name it the same as the name of the fields. There is no need to give it another name. And also there is more guessing. Like uh, if you have an entity reference field, uh, it knows that where you're referencing, you, for example, you can put the title of the node that you're referencing. And since we're using Migrate, Migrate uh, can search for the other uh, the other migration to fill the, the the reference, and also for for passwords for the users very handy. Uh, you can put the plain password in your default content, and it will be has in for the database. And it's very cool that you can have the files under version control because you can detect like, uh, okay, you just created to to nodes of this content type, but I want 20 nodes at least because I want to test the, the, the pager of a view, for example. And that can happen in code review or, or see when something broke because of default content and stuff like that. So this is small parenthesis because I want to talk about file formats. Uh, in the beginning, in Drupal 7 even, we had CSV, but we discovered that it's, it's very plain. It's like a field and a value, a field and a value, but if you notice in Drupal, we have like uh, even the body field, it has uh, the value, which is the text, but it has a summary, it has the, the text format, so it's not so easy to make it with CSV. Also, a simple image field has an, all, an alternative and a title. Uh, we really like YAML because uh, it's more readable. It's more difficult to do the guessing because uh, to do the guessing we only have to we only want to consider the first the first item on the YAML file. So the first item on the YAML file has to has the maximum number of fields. That, I mean, I was talking before that we have a node with all the fields field, uh, all the fields with, with content. That has to be your first item in your YAML. And we are considering JSON um, because uh, it's more like a web format. A lot of web services are using JSON, and 
JSON API is about to be integrated in core, and we can use it to implement our export function. Exporting will mean like we as developers, we create content through the interface of Drupal, and then we export it to files. That is a thing that our module doesn't support yet. So a bit of the history. Uh, on Drupal 7, uh, thanks to Pedro Cambra, who started the module, I think he was on ideas based on what he did on Commerce Guys, no? Yes? Uh, if you remember Migrate in Drupal 7, uh, it was a class where you define all the configuration of your of your migration, and to configure that, we use a YAML file. We started using YAML files in Drupal 7, which was weird at the time. And then uh, each YAML file had his CSV file that the CSV file had the content. But in a YAML file, we, you had to do all the mappings, and it was a bit of a, of a difficulty to, to implement. Uh, also happened that uh, every integration that you wanted to do, it was new code for the module, organic rules, field collection, and the reference. Uh, you have to contemplate every case. It was not automatic. It, it wasn't able to read the configuration of the fields. Okay. So uh, for Drupal 8, we did kind of a rewrite because the migra migrate was in core. That's very cool. We don't we don't depend on external country modules. Uh, and we had to do a rewrite to create like this um, now configuration are a YAML file. So we create these YAML files configurations on the on the fly. We read the the files that had the content, the body, the um, the title of the nodes, and we try to guess what is the configuration of the migration. Um, uh, we have to integrate multilingual support, but it was just setting some keys in the migration because uh, migrate supports multilingual. And also, this is very cool because uh, Migrate knows the order of how it has to run the migrations because we set the dependencies. Like, OK, I see that uh, your nodes are ha your nodes have tags. So what I'm going to do is run the tag migrations first, and then I can run your, your nodes migration. And that's very cool. We don't, we don't have to worry about that. So a bit about the architecture. Uh, for default content, there is no solution in core yet. Uh, we support, well, the, the other popular module that is called default content. Uh, for each module, you can have your default content. Uh, we went through another path, and we have all the content of a project. It's in one folder. Maybe in the future, we support that you can have default content per module or per pro installation profile, but it's not there yet. Uh, we support files. I mean, uh, you have your CSV or your Jammer files with text content, and you can have a, a, a files folder uh, and it will be automatically migrated, so you can reference it by file name. Like, I have attachments, PDF attachments, and I can say, okay, uh, doc1.pdf, doc2.pdf, these are the attachments that my note has. It's very, very easy. Um, it discovers the, the one challenge that we are going to have when we implement export is that we don't really want all the, all the fields exported in our, in our default content. We only care about some fields. Like, for example, uh, the last time it was updated, the last time the, when the node was created, we usually don't care. And we don't say you, you IDs or IDs for the content. We let migrate do that because they are not mandatory fields. Of course, if we, if we don't specify the title for a node, it's going to screen. 
And the files that we create, they, have, they look like this. It might be node.article.yaml or men, menu link content dot main navigation dot yaml, things like that. And also, we allow to, uh, to do overrides over the, that migration that is created on the background on the fly. Like, we always want to create users as inactive. So we set the default value of users that we create with default content is, is, is blocked. Uh, what's this? OK, some examples. Uh, when we were developing the module, since we were dreaming about this concept that we had, we first write these files, these example files, and then we develop the module. So the file, we want it to look like this, and it, this is a, a working file. Like uh, the title, the UID, as you notice, is not an integer, so this needs that there is a migration for users, so you have a user.user.yaml. The repetition is because users don't have bundles. Uh, you can have your body field like this. You can specify only value, and these two will take default values, but in this case, we specify them. And what I was talking before, that you can have attachments, and you just have to put these two files in a files folder. It's as simple as that. And the status for the, this content is going to be published. So you can have also entity reference. Actually, the UID for the, for the node is an entity reference in, inside in the core, but also it's more familiar that you have a field tags or a field keywords that are referencing are referencing uh, taxonomy terms. I didn't came up with the word. We support translations. It's as simple as adding the language that, that you want to translate to. You have to have the node page dot YAML migration created because it understands that that's the origin. Uh, and you only have to set the, the title of the node that you're translating to. So in a real case scenario, this will be in Spanish or English. That is the, the, origin, the origin language for this node. But this, we are setting a translation for Catalan here. So uh, we had to add some special integration that it was just reading how process plugins work in Migrate and just like chewing some fields so we can support these new cases, like entity reference. Like if we have an entity reference, go to other migration to search for, for, for the ID of the, of the reference you have to fill. Uh, recently, we added paragraph, but it was really adding support for entity revisions. We don't support creating different revisions for for a node, because we didn't have the use case for that, but we support the entity revision, reference revisions field. And this was a challenge, mainly because uh, you can have, uh, like, I want to set a title and an alt for an image, but the value for the image, for an image field, is an entity reference. So you have to do a bit of logic there that it detects how the field is structured, so you know how to uh, configure the migration that you want to do for those fields. And I have to thank Tobias Stockler, because he really worked on the module and gave us very good ideas on how to solve these problems. OK, I'm going to talk. Uh, this is what I want to talk about the module a bit, and the alternatives you have to this module uh, are, well, I know if you don't want to move databases around, you, want to, you have to go into the website and write a bit of gibberish into your keyboard, but you probably will run into problems because you 
are writing content that is to sort. This content that you create is not going to be in other environments. It's, so it's not very usable. It's not realistic because it's writing realistic code. Realistic content is boring. And the second thing, well, th this is my history. That's how I went about creating default content. Then I discovered Devil Generate. But it's very random. It has some nice integration. Like, for example, you're a cat person. It, it can create a lot of cat images around your website. And it's very cool. But you don't have uh, much control about what is created. It's very, it's very handy for your testing pagination that I was uh, talking about before. Or I want to set up a search for 5,000 nodes. It's not feasible creating YAMLs for 5,000 nodes. So you use Devil Generate for that. But hey, it's a, it's a fair solution. Then there is a more popular module than micro default content. It's called just default content. Uh, it's what people are using currently. Uh, it's, it uses JSON, but it has problems with uh, exporting files. I think we, by leveraging Migrate like we do, we really made a very simple module that is very close to this module. They, they, have, they support exporting because they use the REST module to create this JSON, and it's very easy. But um, they have to, since they don't have tables like Migrate, they have to fill their files with references, with IDs, with UUIDs of content, and it's a bit messy. So that, that makes uh, references complicated. Uh, this uh, content per module is, is a way of doing it. We, we only have one folder, and the folder is the folder where you have all those channels and your, your PDF files, your, your GPGs, your PNGs. It's just one folder, and usually, well, by default, we configure it to be outside the web route, but that we think is a, is a good practice, not to have this content access accessible. It's not such a security liability, but it's nice to, to don't have this accessible on the, on the website. And, and yeah, the, the files are not standalone. They, they depend on other files to be there, on filling the info field, things like that. So yeah, uh, my testing for this module uh, didn't convince me. Also because we have the um, we had the the Drupal 7 version of migrate default content, and I really loved it. But this module is very difficult to, to work with. And I, I hope that once we have the export functionality in migrate default content, uh, more people are going to adopt it, and it's going to be really easy. And, but in the end, I think the competition is really great. I mean, the purpose of both modules is, 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 is very needed in Drupal to develop, but um, use this module as a base was not possible for, for us because it was another, another concept. It's, it's great that to have competition, to have, to have these guys, they know what, what, are the pe what the people are looking for in a module that creates default content. So that's related to the, to the future of our module. We want to have a lightweight core because at the beginning we depended in Migrate Plus and migrate tools because, hey, you have to use Drust to, to do the migration. And, and now it's possible that we make an interface to, to run the migration. So we want to remove migrate tools, migrate plus, uh, some events that we had there. And hey, maybe someday we get integrated into core to create this, create new install profiles that are have default content, and they don't look as ugly as when you install the, the standard profile. Uh, we want to add JSON. Uh, it doesn't have comments on the, on the content you're creating, but it's very popular, and it's very nice to have it. The first step for us uh, was 
okay, you can add any file format you want as a plugin to migrate default content. On the way, we remove, uh, we remove support for CSV, our old format, we, but we're going to add it again because it's just adding a new plugin. It's very easy. And also another upcoming thing is having a UA for creating the files for the first time, for example, and for, create, for also importing the nodes that you already created with the module. You want to modify some information, so you re-import the, the content. And that was it. I want to make it short. Uh, I want to thank the sponsors of Drupal Camp Spain, and uh, thank you for selecting my talk. Uh, <clears throat> We are, um, I want to do some spam now. We are having an event in Barcelona. Uh, I don't know the dates, I don't remember, but I have stickers here with the website. It's called Drupal Summer. It's going to be lots of fun. And please come to, to, to Drupal Summer. And what? July 1st. July 1st. Christina knows the days, the dates by heart. And yep. And now. I can, if you have some questions, it's a family audience, not so many people. Everything's clear. <laughs> Thank you, Rodrigo. No problem. <laughs>